All right, brother, we, we live on set. Hey, what's up, y'all? We out here on the train tracks. This is the Badlands, Kensington. Beyond that bridge, the other bridge, that's Chillville. Oh, been Chillville? Been for two years now since I've been here. Okay, we that's have our everybody. brother. He's gonna, what's your name, bro? Brett. Brett? Yeah. How old are you, Brett? 51, be 52 now, next month. Hey, you look good for your age, brother. Thank you. Where are you from originally? South Philly, South Jersey. Okay, South Jersey. Where were you born and raised? Last 20 years, the, fed, the federal penitentiaries. Oh, oh I damn. Guess you say that's where I was raised. That's tough life, brother. Yeah. So let's, before we go further, let's go back a little bit. Tell us about your household. What was it like? I, I come from a, a family with, with money, like a lot of money. I walked away from everything from the time I was little. Why? Because to me it was, it was so something, the only thing I had was my heart. And for me, like, tell my pop one thing, like my brother and sister did. And then, you know, my mom said, just tell them what you're good to do what you want. I can't do that. So, and that's been me my whole life. You know, I, I met someone up here, uh, he's now my nephew. He calls me on, that's nephew. So I found out that, you know, in your walk in life, you can find friends that are, that are closer than family. Because one thing I, I walked, you know, another thing I walked away from, I had money myself a couple times in my life, like, like good money. And had joyous times, good, great times, working at strip clubs in Florida, making 20 grand a week. Like, but I never had peace of mind. And that's what I got up here. And I'm actually, funny, my man Malcolm walked into me. I'm writing a book called The Perfect Journey right now. The Perfect Journey. What is the book? Is the book about your life? I'm gonna throw that in there, but it's about it's about remembering yourself and finding heaven on earth because that's happening right now. People don't realize it. We we've, we've forgotten what it's like. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is real. Like we did die that day because we became we could do for ourselves. Like oh, I want this. I think that's where jealousy, envy, and greed became. That we're energized and became part of this earth. If you just do, like, like the Bible says, whatever you want for yourself, do to others. So whatever you want, create that energy in somebody else. You don't have to give them nothing. Just, and, then, and then I live like, say, a world where you decide. From getting a day soda and then Lucy, get, what kind? You decide. To creating good energy and then going out and saying, okay, am I worthy of a cigarette? I find two or three lit cigarettes in my path, at least once a day. Yes, I am. Okay. How far do you go in school? I graduated. I could have went to Brown University, actually. I had a scholarship. I know what Brown was at the time, but I was making good money. I was boxing. I was 18, getting ready to have a child. I wasn't trying to go to college. How many children do you have? Four grown, 11 grandchildren. That's a blessing, brother. Hey, yeah. and you look good for your age. Like I said, man, you still moving strong. So let's talk about, you know, let's, do you have any favorite childhood memories you can think of? Going on cruise ships. That's you know, nice. I'll take a uh, hundred people every year, cruise ships. So that's so my you, finest memory. You know what though? i tell you what, I have to make a long story short. Mm -hmm. You know what my best memories is? When I was starved to death in over the last two years, in the middle of summer, I go behind Domino's see if they had any like, you know, I wouldn't eat nothing that was eaten, but if they had the box set, I'm looking. The guy says, "Don't, don't eat that. He gave, bring me some, uh, some bread, uh, garlic bread." Long story short is, I, I, I tell him, hey, "Let me get a broom, sweep up." And the guy comes with cigarettes. He hands me a pack of cigarettes. I ask for cigarettes. He gives me a pack. Got another guy's brew soda. The manager comes back out, gives me a, a, a pizza. And it was like, that right there. I've been on cruise ships, I've worked in strip clubs for years. Like, but that memory there, when I started and ate that pizza, and it, was, it wasn't just the best pizza. It was like a, a zero to 10. It was a 20 because I was a minus 10 at the time. <laughs> so that's one of my best memories. That's awesome, brother. So let's move along. 
we don't want to lose the sunlight right. now brother we're out here in Kensington how do you end up down this road I did 20 years in, in, in federal penitentiaries everyone hears about the camps lows and penitentiaries they're a whole different creature I did 20 18 straight and two years of violations I came out long storage I had 20 grand in my pocket in two months working hustling doing phones and buying phones and I went and hired 10 homeless people, including my son and, and, and my daughter. And everyone was getting high but me, putting stuff in my car. I went through all my money, clothes, rent, food, everything someone would need. It was winter, I was buying $200 a day in heating for everybody. Um, but they were putting stuff on my seat. I get pulled over, I wore it. So I, I lose my, my, I lose, I end up losing my job because uh, stuff's missing out of the car, uh, the cops took. Uh, I lose my recovery home. I set myself up that out of prison, and then you know lost my car. So here I am. I, you know, I said I'm gonna enjoy the moment. Time. How long have you been home now? Going on three years now. Well, congratulations, three brother. Years. Three years. That's that's impressive. You haven't gone back. So now, brother, what drugs are you out here struggling with? I don't struggle with no drugs. I, I tell you what, I, I take ethics and morals and, and principles out of everything in my life. They don't even exist for me. It's about energy. I remember when I was, when I was had money, I, I used to, not to make, put myself up or anything, but I, I called up toys and throw them on the ground. Uh, one girl sees, sees one time, she goes, oh, you try? I said, no, nah. she goes, yeah, yeah. She, I said, yo, come back up, put it where you found it. She sees it's 20. She goes, why? I said, because the next person, person finds it, need more than I do. And she goes, well, what if a crackhead finds it? I said, you know what? I hope a crackhead finds it. He's probably looking for a fucking cigarette butt. He can look down, see a 20, look up and say, thank you, God. I said, I probably brought someone closer to God. Put that back. You know, that, that's, that's what I'm about. So, brother, you say you don't, you're not addicted to any substance currently? Be uh, honest. We're not here to judge you, brother. Honesty uh, is the best policy. I'll, I'll use addicted. Um, but I've stopped for 18 years, um, but I use hard and weed. Currently, you still do that? Yeah. We're not here to judge you, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. We just talk about, you know, not, what not goes like on. I, not like I, like I, you know, like yeah. I have in the past. I've right. been, been on a long ride. So, is your main drug of choice is what, crack? And weed. Crack and weed, all right. But crack is... It's a problem. Yeah, it is. Have you heard of the crack monster? <laughs> He's no I, joke. I, it, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of crack uh, uh, monsters. Right, you know how it goes. Yeah. Who, intro who introduced you to crack, brother? My brother's been the one to uh, introduce me to pretty much him and everything. Where is your brother now? Who knows? Who knows? He, he, he's, the, he's, he's the bad guy that takes from people. He's still 250 hundred every, every morning on my pop's pocket. He's still from everybody. But everyone loves him. And everybody, I'm like the black sheep. Do you have any resentment towards your brother? No, nah, not at all. Okay. I, I feel, you know, I feel sorry for people that, I feel that you're trapped in your own mind. You'll mm -hmm. never get out of it. That's sad to me. It's mm -hmm. not, no bad feelings over it. And, and he's a good guy, though. I mean, he is, but he he, he steals. <laughs> All right. But. Okay. You're out here in the struggle. What's your current living situation? I got a hut on our side of the bridge. It's it looks fucked up now because I had a chandelier. I had fencing. I had wall carpeting. I had a cover over the whole area. A toilet with a, a, a pipe that ran over the little bridge. Uh, couches, recliners. Um, well, I went away in violation for everyone. I got pulled over and got arrested for all that stuff. Um, so I moved in my hut and was a very nice guy apparently. People knew he shouldn't have been there and they burned it to the ground to get him out. So I come back and it's now I'm putting it back together. But I had a nice place. I'm going to fix it up again. Okay. Next time you definitely got to take us to show us your yeah, spot. Yeah, I'll show you because I got caught when it was raining and it was cold mm -hmm. and I just threw shit up and been late, too lazy to. Uh, Understood. Yeah, I, I'm struggling. You know what I mean? Like, like I have my peace of mind. I say this. I have my peace of mind, which I treasure more than anything. And, and, but it's misery. <laughs> it's turmoil. 
It's especially the cold, cold rain and wind. Like I got an umbrella, it's doing nothing. My head's the only thing that's not soaked. Hmm. And when you, I don't know, people don't know this. When you're cold and wet and you're homeless, it's over because especially when it's a two-day rain, nothing dries. Hmm. If it's dirty, it's gone. It smells. So if anyone helps people when the homes are closed, do it definitely after it rains and it's cold. <laughs> Absolutely. We appreciate it the most then. What, what, what's your, um, what do you do for work out here? How do you get money? Uh, well, there's always restaurants you can, like Burger King, Donald's, something, stands, open doors. I don't never ask for nothing. But you get blessed. As a matter of fact, I tell you a two minute story, quick story. I'm at the gas station, Chinook, in Ontario. I'm like, hey, I'm pumping gas, And he's like, nah, I ain't got it. I said, nah, I'll do it for car blessing. She goes, seems to be funny. I said, nah, no, nah, seriously. I said, please, let me, let me pump your gas out. If you try to give me something, I won't accept it. I said, let, let me pump your gas. And she goes, all right. So I'm pumping it. The guy pulls up behind me. He says, hey, man, you hungry? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty hungry, man. He, he presents his chef Caesar salad. Like, and the lady's coming back and like blocked her path. I look at her, I said, see? I said, Carmen blessed me. I said, you would give me a dollar, which I would appreciate it. I said, I wouldn't have got this though. She says, oh my God. Hmm. Like, she believed in God that day because hmm. that. Right. How is life treating you? I found heaven, brother. Out here? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, I, I wrote a couple of things too. I think I can't, I'm trapped off my face, but I can't get back on it. I was, uh, putting something out there called the fourth way and it's it's part of my journey and um, but I have some stuff on there like when the storm comes I'll, I'll, I'll have my cousin I think she can get back on it put it on there if you follow me Brett Soboleski <laughs> um, but when the storm comes it's about finding that inner peace that love through the storms the storms are, are a blessing and God's jealousy just taking away everything that's false about you everything Follow your heart and everything. And, and all this will be pulled away from you. That's the biggest blessing I have was doing 20 years hard time, being up here in misery. Like it's the best experience of my life because it took away everything that was uh, fake. She said, uh, give, give everything away and walk. Walk into the world that you decide. Whatever mm. you want, give to somebody else, give some feeling. And then uh, open your eyes all right, where's it at? Because you get in the back. <laughs> you know, it might not be right then. It's on its own time schedule, but you got it coming. It's in the bank. Mm. So what's a day in your life look like now, brother? 24 hours out here. No, I've been writing in the book now, so I'm determined to do that. I was just in the hospital. My kidneys shut down uh, twice, uh, three times now. Um, I went to rehab for a few days. Uh, couldn't get, find my peace of mind there, believe it or not. Like, I was just surrounded by negative energy. I, I, I want to finish my book. I couldn't, I didn't write one day there. So, I'm back here, finish my book, and enjoy the, the trees, the peace of mind I have, the world, heaven. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna go through some questions quickly and try to answer them as quickly as you can, all right, brother? Yeah. So you say you did 20 years in the penitentiary. Yeah. How are you feeling now that you are out? Well, <laughs> I didn't think I'd make it out. You know, there was a time when uh, it's the mid-range, early in the mid-range, I wasn't, the penitentiary, like I said, it's a whole different thing in the feds in the penitentiary. Yeah, I, I was planning really uh, suicide by, by combat. Hmm. Just trying to, you know. What's the biggest change in your life since getting out of prison? Biggest change in my life, wow. I've always followed my heart through everything. It, it, it's, 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 I'll, I'll tell you the biggest, is letting go of everything. Everything. Even, you know, that's my cousin. I love her to death, Elizabeth, if you're watching. I love you and you're always on my mind and heart. But I let everything go. I don't even have a phone. Like, I enjoy the moment. And whatever joy or love I can put out, I try to put out. And then go about my day. You know, it, it's, I, I give, give, give what I can and, and then blessings come. Like, you came here. Right, right, right. Tell that's my story how, it, and, you that's know. how it goes. 
Now that you're out, what are you most looking forward to? My joy, believe it or not, comes from bringing joy to other people. It really does. I, I, and now I see behind the curtain. Like now I know that's how you get your joy. Like you get other joy. But I don't even do it for that reason. I haven't. I, I always, it's empathy. That's the one thing that's uh, instantaneous. That feeling when you create a smile, somebody and you you smile magically, like yeah. So that's what I, I I'm about now is seeing what kind of jewelry I can present to the day okay. and get it back. Got you, got I you. Finish my book and get yeah, it out brother, there and help we, other people. We're gonna buy that book once it's done. I'll, I'll buy a buy a copy and the family will. All right, so let's move along, brother. What do you miss most about the time you were incarcerated? <laughs> well, I, I don't miss much about it. The, the learning experience, the, the, the tearing away of all the veils and, and the, that, that were over my eyes. The struggle. That I spent seven, probably seven years in the shoe. It's, it's solitary. Hmm. And, and we fight there. You, you, there there's more killings in the, in the shoes. Man, well, I never knew socks, that. Man. Due to the fact is, you know, you're in that cell by yourself. Uh, and I stood on my two, own two feet. Like, they got cars. I, I, they started doing coalitions. I said, nah, I'm Philly. I'm, mm. So it was half Philly, which was me, and the rest was our coalition. Like, I fought every car in there. All right. What has been the most challenging, the most challenging part about adjusting, adjusting to life outside. You, you know, it's funny. The first thing I'm gonna say is technology. Like, I couldn't even use a phone, right? I couldn't even answer the phone if I'm using it. And then it rings like I ain't even. I couldn't even do that without fucking everything up. And you know, I made all that money when I first got out, giving away phones, the bomb phones. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I know nothing about it. Other than I know how to do the application. I know nothing about like. That's a hindrance to me. Technology, yeah, right. Technology. You're not the yeah, only like, one. Yeah, I got brother. McDonald's. I don't even know how to order a freaking thing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I got dollar twenty-five. Does that buy me a cheeseburger? Or, I don't know. Like, right. I don't know how to do that stuff. Okay. So since you've been, and I'm almost blind, so I'm probably legally blind. I can't even read. I know it's E, but I can't even read that, like the first yeah. letter. Yeah, I hear you, brother. So a I got. If I'm on the bus, you know how many times I end up at the, at the last stop. Hmm. It's fucking crazy. And one time I did, and there's no more buses going back. Wow. Like, Jesus, that's tough. So, what have you been doing with your time since you've been home? Enjoying the moment, wherever that moment brings me. If I'm on the Elf, I'm talking to you, if I'm on my hut in Chillville, mm -hmm. if I'm going to the bodegas, getting a little Pepe Leo, mm. they're a doll right over here. Yeah. So I'm go after that. You know okay. your interview. Is there anything you learn about yourself during your time in prison? Time immortal. I stood up, I, I passed every test there was. That's, what, that's what's important, it's following your heart through everything. You know, my daughter's like, oh, don't do that. You, 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 you. No, do do that. That's what life's about, love. Hmm. Right, right. What are your hopes for the future? That people can find the place that I found. Heaven's on earth and it's right now. A lot of people just live in purgatory. That's all. Right. So during the tough times in life, what do you think have helped you? God, the world, the universe, absolute, whatever you want to call that other, was its presence shown itself to me every, when I needed it and then constantly. Like this soda, I was over my hut, thirsty as hell. I got, I, I'm trying to find 60 cents, I, I found 20 of it. Hmm. I'm like, yeah, I can't get a freaking soda. I wouldn't even get a soda like this. I would get like a day's dollar. Someone came by like, yo, you, you want a soda? I'm like, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, yeah, so I'm, brother. I don't know where a soda comes to me. Right, that's. That, that's heaven, you know what I mean? Like, people heart. look for these big miracles like this water parting. No, that's the miracle. I, I agree. Now that you're back into society, brother, how can others support you? I would say just not... Some people have a tendency to group you, categorize you, and put you into a group. Keep me separate. Judge me by who, who, who I am to you and, and what, you know what I mean? Don't 
put me in a category because I'm not like anybody else. I promise you. Yeah, you're unique. Yeah, like I said, I, I've been tested. I've always followed my heart. I, I've stood. I, I've had some battles over that, man. Okay. All right, brother. We about to shut down. I really appreciate you being courageous and sharing part of your story with us. Thank if you. people want to reach out to you, do you have an email? Uh, I, I'm locked out of that apparently. But if you get my name, uh, Brett Soboleski. You know, well, us, but, if but, you uh, have just look me up on Facebook. Just wait a couple weeks because I'm locked out of this one. I'm a, a technology again. I'm gonna have somebody fix it for me. Okay. I might start a new one, but all right, follow brother. me on Facebook and hit me up. And uh, I think I'm gonna start. Someone said something about a GoFundMe. It, I'm a, I'm going on a pilgrimage after I finish my book. I call it a pilgrimage. It's around the world. <laughs> all that's cool. Jacobean route, Peru. Right. Uh, but I'm gonna start GoFundMe and see what happens. Okay.